Okay, so pumps. Um, we have a glossary of pumps if you're more interested in the topic. But really what a pump is, to, is used to do is to obtain water from below the surface, so underground water, and to move a fluid through a fluid system, you need to use something that will work against the pull of gravity. So that's a pump. So one of the first types of pumps that was invented was an Archimedes screw, which is something that uh, we talked about again in our last unit. So pumps in a city... Uh, we're used to move water to an elevated reservoir so that the force of gravity can allow the water to flow down and into homes. So you see in small towns have a well and the water or and a water tower that is usually the tallest structure in town. Pumps are also used to move oil, natural gas, and other fluids through pipelines. Pumps are also located in automobiles to help get the gas from the fuel tank to the engine, and they are also used to force air into tires. So your mouth is also a pump that can be used to draw a fluid up a straw and into your mouth. Valves are devices that regulate the flow of a fluid. So today, valves can control not only the flow, but the rate and the volume and the pressure or direction of liquids, gases, slurries, or dry materials through a pipeline, chute, or similar passageway. A valve is a product rarely noticed by the average person, yet it plays an important role in the quality of our lives. It is essential, essential for virtually all manufacturing processes and every energy production and supply system, yet it is one of the oldest products known to man, um, with a history of thousands of years. Each time you turn on a water faucet, use your dishwasher, turn on a gas range, or step on the accelerator of your car, you operate a valve. Without a modern valve system, there would be no fresh, pure water or automatic key in your home, there would be no plastic utilities, and beyond wool and coal, there would be no energy of any kind. Plastics would be unheard of, and there would be many inexpensive com consumer products. Or sorry, as would many in inexpensive consumer products. Valves can turn on and off, regulate or isolate, control the flow of all types um, from the thinnest gas to the highly corrosive chemicals, superheated steam, abrasive slurries, toxic gases, and radioactive materials. They can handle temperatures from cr in the cryogenic region to the molten metal and pressure from a high vacuum to thousands of pounds per square inch. The range in size from a fraction of an inch to as large as 30 feet in diameter, and they vary in complexity from a simple brass valve available at your local hardware store to a precision-designed, highly sophisticated coolant system control valve made of an exotic metal alloy in a nuclear reactor. So if we look here at submarines, so submarines are designed to be used at great depth. The rigor of double-walled hulls allow a crew to live and work normally underwater as long as the air and power supplies last. Submarines can steer by turning a rudder left and right, and the propeller moves the subs through the water, pushing against the water and creating a for forward force. How submarines work is inside the submarine, there is a container called ballast tanks. If these are full of air, the submarine will float, even though it is made of steel, and the average density of the submarine works out to be less than that of water. By pumping water into the ballast tanks, the submarine can sink. This is because when the ballast tanks are full of water, the submarine has a greater density than that of water. Details for submarines is that an object will float if it displaces enough water to support its weight. Subs don't sink because of their metal shell or hull surrounds a volume weighing less than or equal to amount of water. Subs can sink, rise, and float underwater if they maintain neutral buoyancy. So when the ballast tanks are full of air, the sub weighs less than the volume of water it displaces, so it is less dense than the water and it floats. When the ballast tanks is flooded with water, the sub weighs more than the water that it dip displaces, so it is more dense than the water and it sinks. Um, to rise again, the sub reduces the density by pushing compressed air into the ballast tanks, and this air forces the seawater out, and the sub goes upwards towards the surface. To move beneath the surface and to hover around the, the water, the submarine's ballast tanks is the main equal weight of the water that it is displacing. In the next video, we will talk about some submersibles.